Okay, so uh, the first of these problems says a car accelerates from rest at 8 meters per second squared for 12 seconds. And what is its final velocity? All right, so like always, we're going to go right through the six problem solving steps. The first step is to write down all the givens. So what do we have for givens here for number one? The acceleration. Yeah, and what's the acceleration here? Eight meters per second squared. Exactly. So the symbol for acceleration is AX, and that's eight meters per second squared. And remember, we can always tell that's going to be the acceleration because of the unit, right? Meters per second squared has to be your acceleration. Good. What's another given? The time. Seconds. Yeah, the time, the time is 12 seconds, both you said at the same time. Um, right, so delta T, that's our symbol for time. And we know that's 12 seconds, right? Seconds, remember the unit is always a giveaway, right? Seconds is an amount of time, so that's got to be your delta T. Uh, and we, we always need three givens for these types of problems. Even though there's, there's only two numbers in the problem there, is there something else that's given to us? Another piece of information? Zero. Yeah, VXI. zero. What's zero? Say that one more time. VXI. Yeah, the VXI, the initial velocity is zero, right? Because the car accelerates from rest. So at the beginning, it's not moving, its velocity is zero, right? The from rest is always a big, a big giveaway. All right, so we've got three givens, our acceleration, our time, and our velocity. Uh, our units work out, that's all SI units, meters per second squared and seconds, so we don't need to do any unit conversion. Um, so we can move on to step two, which is to write the symbol for the unknown. What's the unknown in this case? What are we looking for? VXF. Yeah, VXF, the final velocity. Right, and we can tell that because it's pretty explicitly asked, right? What is its final velocity? All right, so we've got our givens and our unknown, and now step three, and this is where it's uh, a little trickier than it was before because now we have four equations to pick from, right? And we want to choose the right equation here. So remember to find the right equation. Let's see if I can get them all on the screen here. To find the right equation, we need to find the equation that has exactly these four symbols in it: ax, delta t, vxi, and vxf. Right, and only one of those four equations is going to work. So which one of these has AX, delta T, VXI, and VXF? The second one? Yeah, the second one, perfect. Right, this is the only one of these that has AX, uh, delta T, VXI, and VXF. Right, all the others have like a delta X in them, and we don't know what delta X is, so we can't plug it in, and we don't care what delta X is, so we don't need to solve for it. So only this equation is going to work. So it's important to make sure we, we write it down, right? You want to write down the equation that you start with. That way, if things go bad from there, you, you get some points for that, right? Usually when I grade these, and I know we're not doing a lot of quizzes or anything this year, but um, you get partial credit, right? You get credit for picking out the right givens. You get credit for picking the right equation. Um, and then, you know, you also get credit for rearranging it and getting the right answer and putting units on your answer. So this is the equation we're going to use, right? Step four of the problem solving steps is to rearrange the equation if we have to, right? So we have to get the unknown all by itself on one side. But in this case, we're looking for VXF and it's already all by itself on one side. So we don't have to do that. So we can go right to step five, which is to plug in our, um, plug in our numbers and calculate. So I can do that. The initial velocity was just zero. The acceleration is eight meters per second squared. And the time is 12 seconds. So for my final velocity, I just get eight times 12. You can use your calculator if you want to, always. And we see that it's gonna be 96. Ninety six meters per second. All right, so um, 
we want to check our answer. Uh, oh, well, the, the reason we get meters per second as our unit, right, is because if we have meters per second squared up here and we multiply by seconds, this seconds cancels out with one of the seconds in the denominator and we have meters per second. And that works out because, um, sorry, because uh, meters per second is the unit for velocity. So our answer makes sense. Any uh, questions about number one? Why we did any part of that? All right, well, we're going to look at number two and then number five as well. So remember, if, if you're stuck or you're not sure why I do something or if I'm talking too fast or anything like that, please uh, stop me and ask if you'd rather ask in the in the chat, that's fine. If you want to use the, the raise your hand uh, feature of Zoom, you can do that as well. But feel free to speak out too. Whatever works for you. So number two. All right, number two is a car accelerates. So this is it's similar, but it's a different different problem, right? A car accelerates from rest at eight meters per second squared over a distance of 200 meters, right? Now it's telling us how far it travels while it accelerates, and then it's asking again for its final velocity. So starting with step one, what are the givens here? A x is going to be 8 meters per second. Exactly. Yeah. Our AX is 8 meters per second squared, just like in the last problem, right? This is meters per second squared. It's got to be our acceleration. The initial velocity is going to be zero. Exactly. Just like in the last problem, we're starting at rest. So the VXI is zero, the initial velocity. What else? Time is 12 seconds. Uh, that was number one, right? Oh, yeah. Distance is 200 meters. Distance is 200 meters, right? That's exact, exactly right. So what, what's the symbol I use for distance? It's the triangle, then X. Yeah. The triangle is the delta, right? That's the Greek. It's a capital D in the Greek alphabet. You know, we will use a... Uh, Greek symbols a lot in physics, and whenever you see a delta in physics, it means a change, right? So delta x means the change in x or the change in your position. All right, so we've got three givens, so that's good. We don't need to convert any units because they're all in SI, meters and meters per second squared. Um, what's the unknown for number two? The final velocity. Yeah, the final velocity, right? Just like in number one, again, we're trying to find the VXF. So the only thing that's different is the delta X instead of a delta T. Uh, but that's going to give us a different equation now, because in step three, choosing the proper equation, we have to pick the equation that has these four symbols in it, right? AX, VXI, delta X, and VXF. So which one of the big four kinematic equations are we going to use this time? Last one. Yeah, the last one, right? Because the last one has AX, VXI, Delta X, and VXF, right? That's the only one of those four that has those symbols. All the others have a Delta T in it, and we don't know Delta T, and we don't care about Delta T, so we wouldn't use any of those. So I'll copy down that equation. Final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus 2 times AX times Delta Okay, so now I can go on to step four, which is to rearrange the equation if I have to. Right? I want VXF all by itself on one side. And again, it's already all by itself on one side, so I don't need to do any of the algebra here. Um, so I can go right on to step five, which is to plug in, plug in my numbers. So what I get for VXF squared is my initial velocity squared, so that's zero squared. 
plus 2 times my acceleration, which was 8 meters per second squared, times my delta x, which is 200 meters. So that means I get, for Vxf squared, uh, well, 0 isn't going to do anything, so I just have to do 2 times 8 times 200, and I get 3,200. And if I look at my units, I've got meters per second squared times meters. The meter, this, the, both meters in the numerator, so they don't cancel out. What I end up with is a meters times a meters. So I get meters squared over a second squared. So is that my answer? Am I all done here? No. No, why, why, why do I still have one more thing to do? Uh, get rid of the, the squared. Yeah, right? What we found here is Vxf squared. But what we want is just Vxf, right, the final velocity. So if I know the final velocity squared, what do I have to do to find the final velocity? Square root it. Square root it, exactly, right? If I know what, what it is squared, then I just have to find the square root. So that means, right, because if I take the square root of both sides is what I'm really doing. So the square root of Vxf squared, that's just Vxf. And the square root of 3,200, oops, uh, wait, where's, this is the square root of 3,200. That's 56.56, I'll round that to 56.6. And for my unit, this even works out too, because if I take the square root of meters squared over seconds squared, I just get meters per second. So now I check my answer. And I ended up with meters per second as my unit, which is right because I was looking for a velocity. And 56.6 uh, meters per second for, for a car, that's, uh, that seems pretty reasonable. That's fine, maybe a little, a little fast. Any questions on number two, the second one there? If you're having trouble doing the math or, or that part of it, I don't want you to worry too much about that yet. If you can get the givens right and you can pick the right equation, um, that, then, you're on, then you're on good track and the math will come in time. Right? But, but I want to make sure everybody can, can get the right givens and get the right equation because if you can't do that, you can't really get started. So if you're not sure why any of the things are givens that we're picking out here, please speak up. Mister, I have a question. Yes. What's delta x? Delta x is our distance or our displacement, right? That's how, how far it goes. So if you have a given in meters, right, like up here, 200 meters, that's how far. That's a, that's a good clue that that's going to be your delta x, distance or displacement. Okay. Anybody else has any, any other questions before we go on to number five? So number five here, and I'll, I'm, I'm skipping over three and four, right? So because I'm going to give you a chance to, to rework three and four after we finish going over this one. So number five says a car accelerates at a rate of three meters per second squared for nine seconds, reaching a speed of 126 meters per second. And what was its original velocity? All right, so let's start, like always, with picking out the givens. All right, what's one, uh, one thing given to us here? A meter per second. Okay. Which one? Uh, 126. Yeah, so we have 126 meters per second. What symbol should I put for that? We always need to, we always need to figure out what symbol goes with each given. That way we can pick out our, our correct equation. The final velocity? 
Yeah, that's the final velocity, right? That's good. Um, so that's our V, X, F, right? And we know that's a final velocity because it says it's reaching a speed of 126, right? So that's the speed that it gets up to after it's accelerating, right? So that's the, that's the ending velocity, the final velocity. And we knew it had to be a velocity because of the meters per second, right? Meters per second is the unit for velocity or speed. So it had to be either VXI or VXF, and we knew it's VXF because of the context, right? We know that it gets up to that speed. Uh, what's another given here? We know that time is nine seconds. Perfect, yeah, we have time is nine seconds, right? Delta T is nine seconds. And again, seconds, seconds is a unit of time, right? So it's gotta be our delta T. And we're looking for for the um, initial velocity. We are looking for the initial velocity, right? That'll be our unknown, because it says, what is its original velocity, meaning what is its initial velocity? Um, but we got one more given, right, before we can move on. That the car um, accelerates three meters per second squared. Yeah, so which symbol is that? AX. Yeah. That's AX, right? That's our acceleration. We can tell that because of the unit, meters per second squared. So that's great. We have our three givens. We have our unknown. So we can go on to step three, which is to choose the right equation. So which equation is going to have the VXF, the VXI, the delta T, and the AX? Second. Yeah, that's right. The second one. That's got VXF, VXI, delta T, and AX. None of the other ones will work. So I'll copy that down. So now step four up to step four now, rearrange the equation if necessary to get the unknown by itself on one side. This time I have to do that, right? Because I'm looking for VXI, but VXI is not all by itself on one side. So I do have to do a one step of algebra. Right? What's the one step I need to take if I want VXI by itself? Anybody know? We'll figure it out. You have to multiply by itself. Say that again. You have to multiply by itself. By VXI? Oh yeah. Mm, well, if I multiply both sides by VXI, that's not gonna that's that's not gonna leave VXI by itself. All right? If I if subtract. I want to okay, subtract. That's, I like that idea. What what do I need to subtract? The VXI. Um, I could, if I subtract VXI, then I won't have VXI on this side, but I'll have VXF minus VXI. Wait, no, subtract AX and then divide by time. Close. So I can't just subtract the AX because it's being multiplied by delta T. But what I can do, right, since these are multiplied together, I, this is one term in the equation, right? I can, I can treat this AX times delta T just like one thing and I can subtract this whole piece. So what I want to do here is do minus AX times delta T on both sides. Because now on this side, I have plus AX times delta T minus AX times delta T, and that cancels. And then on this side, I'll have VX minus AX times delta T. So I'll rewrite that. I'm sorry, I'm running out of space here. Um, if I rewrite that, I get VXF minus AX times delta T equals VXI. Any questions on how on how uh, on how we did that? And the reason we can't just subtract a, AX as well, it's kind of it has to do with order of operations, right? PEMDAS. You, you have to multiply these two together before before they're added on. 
Are we okay with that with that piece of algebra? Okay, so now we can do the last um, or step five, which is to plug in our numbers, right? For VXI here, I get VXF, which was 126 meters per second, minus AX, which is three meters per second squared, times delta T, which is nine seconds. That's our VXI. Uh, so I'll plug that into the calculator. And I got 126 minus 3 times 9 gives me 99. And meters per second squared times seconds, just like before, the seconds canceled out with one of these seconds, and our unit that we're left with is meters per second. Uh, and step six, right, to check our answer. The units work out because meters per second is a unit of velocity. That's what we expected. And the number makes sense because uh, if it's accelerating up to a speed of 126, it should have started out going a little bit slower. And 99 seconds is definitely slower than 126. So that seems like it's an okay answer. Any questions on number five there? I have a question, Mister. So I, um, I didn't. Um, the way you organized the equation, I didn't do it the same way, but I still got the same answer. How did you? What did you have for your equation? I subtracted um, vxf uh -huh. from the front, and I moved it inside, and then I subtracted both sides of vxi, and then I put um like I kind of flipped them the VXI and the VXF yeah um so you had you had what you just had you just had it on the opposite sides yeah so I had um minus VXI equals AX times triangle T minus VXF and I still got the same answer yeah that that sounds fine um Yeah, I, I think you're all right. I mean, if you got the same answer, that, that's fine. There's, there's usually more than one way to, to rearrange this. Um, I did it this way because because uh, we could do it in just one step. I think the way you did it might have taken more than one step. Is that right? Yeah, it did. Yeah, so so that's fine. Um, there's, there's, all, there's always more than one way to, well, there's usually more than one way to do it. Um, so that sounds okay. Um, good. Uh, any other questions? About one, two, or five. All right. 